It's so quiet right now. Shh. Don't wake up the dogs. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> no, but seriously. I wanted to record this video because people are often commenting on why I say false. You know, maybe you're one of those people that now that you see this video, you'll understand why I write underneath maybe your picture or your post or something on social media where the comment was simply false. You know, F-A-L-S-E, which means not true or not truth. 2020 just recently did a very interesting special that you could probably still look it up and maybe if you go to ABC or whatever brand of channel that they do it, um, you could probably find the program listing and then go back into it and maybe on Hulu or some other thing, you know, find the program itself and then watch it. But they were doing a, a study on people that were addicted to texting and social media, meaning that they were commenting, they had their, their smartphones or else their iPads or whatever. They needed to try to break that addiction. And one of the interesting things that came out on the comments was that this one person had discovered that as they weren't able to text anymore, they were suddenly forced into having conversation, having communication with another human being because they were out and they wanted to meet someone, but they wanted to text about it while they were waiting and it was driving them nuts. So they really had to start talking to people and by way of talking to people, she suddenly was paid attention to and became less of a social wallflower and became more of a social bull person. And the whole long and the end and short of it was that the person discovered a whole new world that was interactive rather than text active or social media. Well, as they continued this experiment, the roommates who had all been giving up their technology or technology um, addictions, they began to make things like on the wall, like little post-its for texting and Twitter because they wanted to, you know, kind of still deal with, you know, they wanted to talk. Well, when they started to write down these things and then post it, when they put it on one of those postums and then they put it up on the wall, they could still see what they had texted. They could still see what they had Twittered. They could still see what they had posted. And suddenly they didn't want to post as much as what they had done previously when they were able to do it with technology. Because you see, a lot of times when you text something or when you post something or when you write it on Facebook, it disappears. It's out there. It's gone. Oh boy. It's no longer seen by you. But you see, it is by us. And that's leading me to the point of what they came up to a conclusion at the end of this 2020 special was that the majority of people, majority, almost 80 to 90 percent, post, text, and do things without thinking at all. They will write things and shoot it out on Twitter, shoot it out on texting, shoot it out on Facebook without thinking about it whatsoever. And because it's out there and gone, their first reaction is like, oh, it's okay, and then they move on. Because they're being hit so fast with so much information, it's bypassing, bypassing their thinking capacity. They're reacting. It's nothing but off the hip, off the cuff, so to speak, as it used to be an expression, reactions. One of the things I learned 20 years ago, it may have been 10 years ago, because probably 20 years ago now, but I learned a long time ago about texting, before there was texting. It used to be a thing called chat rooms, you know, and people would have these chats going on, you know, constantly just and Usenet used to have chat rooms and you'd have these conversations that you had to really pay attention to, you know, because, you know, one line of conversation would be you and then there'd be six different conversations going on and another line would be for you and then, you know, it's kind of hard to keep track of unless you were very good at keeping track of all of the conversations, which that's what I did. And so 
I was trained up in information dissemination as well as information correlation and correlation and being able to do those kind of things on the information technology level that a lot of people can't do or don't do. And so when God moved me into the ministry on the internet, it wasn't as though I was unprepared, but that he had prepared me ahead of time for the skill sets with which I have in what I deal with as far as God is concerned on the internet. The majority of people I find, whenever they post something, present something, write something, or even comment on something, is they don't think about what they just wrote. Nine times out of ten, they have no clue where it came from. They just share, forward, um, what's the other word? <laughs> like, there we go. They like, share, forward, and pass on this quote-unquote information or picture or whatever it may be without ever really thinking about it being a part of their life. And then recently Supreme Court decisions decided that you're responsible for what you do on the internet. You can be sued on Facebook for what you post. You don't realize that Jesus said every idle word spoken of man, he would be held accountable for. And when it's a written word, whoa, worse there than many other places that you could possibly deceive, be deceived, or make a fool of yourself, or sadly, fail someone to live up to the witness of what you say you are when you have your Facebook account and you claim to be a Christian and go out and comment like a carnal, worldly person. The reality of why I post things is because I am in ministry on the internet. Period. That's the only reason I'm on the internet. I have no other reason to be there. There's nothing that interests me. I've already gone beyond that. I'm not interested in the internet. The reason I do that now is because that's how God uses the word, the videos, and the things that I post to minister, to touch, to reach out, to share, to care, to be there for people and individuals that maybe don't understand what they're doing, much less I'll ever run into or have contact with. So because I'm skilled in that area, there's some things I do in order to initiate ministry. And they've all been prayed through, prayed over, and asked of God, what should I do? A good example is when somebody posts something like, you know, penny saved is a penny earned in the Bible. Well, of course it's not in the Bible. That's from Benjamin Franklin. And because we're on the internet, you could Google it and find out immediately. But you see, that's part of the problem. People don't Google or use another window to search what they're reading and then comment to validate what's being said or prove what's accurate. I do. The reason I post false is because my, as they used to say in the visible world, my professional opinion is worth money or my opinion has fact behind it. I post false because it gives the opportunity to state without categorically going into detail for social media reasons that what you're reading isn't true. And usually once a person begins to ask, I'll comment on what's wrong with the post even though I know full well that usually almost 80% of the time, maybe 90, people take personal the comments that are being directed towards the false post, not that the person is false. You see, I know people don't think what they say. Things pop out of their mouth they don't even reason about. Out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus said, the mouth speaks. And if you ever want to know where a person is coming from, all you have to do is listen to them. One of the skill sets that I learned very early on in counseling and ministry was to shut up and listen. You don't have to say anything. All you got to do is listen and recognize what the Bible says about what people speak. After all, the words of your mouth are those things which justify you, and the words of your mouth are the things which condemn you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In the multitude of words, there lacks not sin. 
when you study Proverbs to the degree that I have in Ecclesiastes and what Jesus said and apply them all together as a corporate instruction book, then you begin to look at life, human beings, and the world in a different way. You begin to have, quote unquote, a pretty good accuracy when it comes to discernment. And when you go onto the internet, suddenly it becomes a whole bigger venue than you ever dreamed possible. And so, getting to the issue of false, the fact is, whenever I post the word false, I'm actually saying two things. One, I'm commenting on the post, but I'm also warning people, don't ask, because you don't want to know. It is false. There's no doubt about it. But I will share the truth with you, because all I'm trying to say is, look, you blew it. You messed up. You opened your mouth without thinking. You wrote without investigating. You didn't do your research. You didn't find out the facts. You didn't know the truth. And the truth is going to set you free, but it's going to embarrass you too. And that's why a lot of times faults, when I write it, offends people. Because they know. You see, that's what's weird about human beings is you kind of like enjoy the little gossiping, you know. The little white lie is okay as long as nobody catches you in your white lie. The exaggeration is just, well, you know, we like to embellish stories. I mean, it's not going to hurt anybody, is it? Then again, if it's always on the internet, and if it's there for people to read, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me unless they are the words that condemn me or contemn me or ruin my witness for who I say I am but I can't live up to who I really am because the words coming out of my mouth are the opposite of what I'm actually doing. And that's why I try to warn people, look, don't just share or click like or just automatically pass on garbage, you know, junk mail, you know, fluff and stuff. You know, the stuff that is really like more of a dog pound, you know, poop and scoop. You know, whenever you take your dog out, you know, as these dogs, you know, I have to do. You know, I take them out for a walk, and guess what happens? You know, you got to carry your little baggie, because, you know, sure enough, take a dog for a walk, you're taking them out to poop. So there's the poop and scooper. You know, you take a little plastic bag inside out, you know, tie it up, bingo. Take it home and get rid of it. Right? <laughs> well, obviously, these dogs don't, and that's why I have them. They don't need pooper scoopers. And that's what God doesn't want to do with you. He doesn't want to go around cleaning up your messes. He wants you to start mindfully considering your ways and to think about what you should be doing. To study, to show yourself approved, to work on that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You don't need to be ashamed of what you wrote unless someone like me comes along and says, hey, you got a Bible. You're sitting there on the internet, you got every possible pastor, elder, deacon, means to find out information by using Google or Bing or Alta Vista or any number of search programs. You could be the smartest person in the universe because you're sitting there on the internet. But instead, you just go and spit out what? Poop. You see, that's kind of what happens. Something stinks when I see things that aren't true. Something's wrong when I smell out, so to speak, with this nose, you know, what a Christian is telling me, when it's obviously coming from a humanist or worldly perspective. Jesus is the one who said, look, love not the world nor the things of the world, for the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are the sins that will trip you up. And I find that typically on Facebook, Twitter, and texting. People overwhelmed by the ability to, to go for it and like the Nike commercial says just do it, well they're lacks not sin in my opinion and I can wait for oh not very long to see guess what? The person isn't thinking but they are doing. And that's what you should recognize when you see that post false. If you really want to know and you ask, I will comment. But more often than not, I don't want to comment after posting false. 
I would prefer that the person went, oops, and deleted it. I have one friend on the internet. Now, I have lots of friends, you know, of course, but if you look on the web page, you know, you'll see that there are lots of friends and lots of things, you know, and there's been, you know, hundreds of thousands of people on the forums, you know, that minister to at different times, and sometimes, you know, monthly, sometimes weekly, sometimes daily. But I have one friend who, for the most part, catches and watches for, you know, little things, but, you know, I keep an eye out because this friend had mentioned before that wanted me to be involved in their ministry, and I said, <laughs> yeah, well, like with my free time. But even though I said no, I still watch out, and sometimes they'll post something that, you know, I'll comment on. I'll say, look, that's wrong. It's, you know, because they know me and my heart. They don't have a problem with me commenting without saying false first. I usually start off with false, and then I'll put two or three comments about why it's false, because I know this person will check up on what I've said, but also delete whatever post is false. And so far, 100% is 100%. And I don't use the word false lightly. You know, I know people out there are offended by it, but I'm more offended by misleading someone from Jesus and from knowing the truth than I am from posting the word false and offending someone who's putting out propaganda or fallacies or untruths or lies or political agendas or some other gamesmanship simply to feel better because they're venting on the public by dumping their poop all over, literally, the walkway. And that's the point that should be made. When you are posting in public, think of it this way. What are you putting out there in the middle of the sidewalk? Are you pooping in the middle of the sidewalk and people have to walk around it rather than step in it? Because everything that you do is seen on the internet. Everything you post on Facebook is visible to the public if you make it public. Oh, it's assumed it only goes to your close friends, which you know as well as I do. You don't have only close friends. You can set that up now, and they've offered ways to do that where only your close friends get posts, and you can just you know keep them closer, and everybody else gets kind of like a you know general posting that you can send out to the public. But most people don't do that, do they? They just poop in public, and that's what the dogs here are for. We need to quit acting like dogs and grow up to be men of God. We need to acquit ourselves as men and not act like, you know, man caves and putting ourselves in the pound with these dogs and having to have someone come along and clean up our mess. Because it is obvious that I will find, usually, if it comes across my desk, a lot of faults. And I don't like to do it, but I'll do it. I'll post faults because I want to let other people know, hey, watch out, there's poop on the sidewalk. Walk around it. Don't buy into it. Don't step in it. Don't get involved in this. And that's why I post false, really. Because I'm just warning others not to participate, not to take as fact, not to get involved in some statement of which the post itself has proven to be false. I wish it would be just simple that I could post false and people would delete it. I mean, why, why not? You would be thought wiser to have covered a matter and hidden it than to argue it and debate it with someone like me. Because, I'll be honest, you know, if it's false, you don't have a leg to stand on. And I've already proven it. It's just a question of, do you really want to find out all the reasons why it's false? And there are a lot. Always is. And so, that's why I post the word false on the internet. That's why you'll see, you know, especially at Vidivo.com, you know, different things that are false, you know, because at Vidivo.com, as opposed to Vidivo.org, we like to mention those things that are misleading people, that are, you know, misconstruing or, you know, really wrong. I mean, they're just telling people the wrong thing, wrong ideas, wrong motivations, wrong attitudes, wrong perspective. Because at Vidivo.com, as opposed to Vidivo.org, we're willing to bring out the good, the bad, and the ugly about ministries. The good ministries, yes. The bad ministries, yes. And the ugly ones, too. But we're willing to comment for the sake of helping them to recognize what's bad as well as what's good. Because even in the ugly ministries, God usually moves in somebody's life there. 
That's why he has people there. Otherwise, no one would be there. Because it's not just about the crowds that become mobs and masses, but it's about the dog pound. Men don't have to act like dogs so they like to get down on their hands and knees and bark. But they can turn themselves and acquit themselves like men if they choose to listen to what the Spirit of God might say. And that's why I choose the word false to open the door at vidigo.com as well as at vidigo.org in small degree to people recognizing, look what you're doing, recognize you need to research this a little deeper, and if you find out that after I posted false that there's something wrong with it, even if you have just a, a gut feeling that something's wrong, delete it. It looks so much better as a witness for you than it does for you to leave it there with the word false under it. And you can delete the word false, but believe me, everyone's already seen it. And they already know it. Because most of us know how to use search engines. And once they see that word false, they've already looked it up and you're wearing the emperor's new clothes. You're standing there stark naked on the internet with nothing to show. And believe me, no clothes on at all. <laughs>